we have this morning. Uh, she is an awesome woman that I've had the chance to, uh, Cathedral of Faith has had the chance to fellowship with her ministry uh, in times past. And all I know is that we had a hallelujah time. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. And I thank God. Uh, her mother is, 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 is an awesome person also. Yes. Yes. God bless her. God bless her. Amen. She is also a member of our family. Amen. Amen. She is a member of our family. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And uh, as I said, she is the daughter of Evangelist Winnie Hightower and the late Elder Wilmer Hightower Sr. And the mother of one son, Lovick B.J. Bellinger III. And uh, she, is, she is the uh, faithful pastor of uh, God's Citadel of Healing and Deliverance. And uh, the one thing that I do know about Pastor Bellinger is that she is a woman that loves the Lord. Amen. She loves the Word of God, and she is a mighty woman of valor, and she can preach the Word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. So I introduce to you to some and present to others our keynote speaker at this time, Elder Sharon Bellinger. Please stand and give her a hand clap.
to receive it in our minds to take heed, to apply it to our everyday living so we'll be ready when you come. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for everything. Just in case we forget to say something, we thank you for everything. In the name of Jesus, thank you for what you've done in the past. Thank you for what you're doing right now. And thank you for what you yet have in store. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the angel of this house. We ask that you continue to strengthen her. So the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Continue to heal and strengthen in the name of Jesus. Uh, and those that you have placed to be with her and follow her leadership. God, for their faithfulness, honor their faithfulness. And whatever their hearts desire, according to your divine order, grant it in the name of Jesus, as only you can do. And again, we say thank you for your miracle. Thank you for your miracle. Thank you for your miracle. In Jesus' name, chapter verses 1 through 7 and then verse 9 and it reads as thus and if you don't mind standing for the reading of God's word Amen. and Jehu the son of Nimshi shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room 2 Kings 2 and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. Right. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee. Here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan, jumping to the ninth verse. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Thus is the reading of the word. Grace and peace be unto you. You may be seated. And I just want to discuss this thought. Lord, I want a double portion of your spirit that's in my leader to be in me. I want a double portion of your spirit 
that's in my leader. If you notice, I didn't say I want a double portion of my spirit, of my leader's spirit. But I want a double portion of your spirit that's in my leader to be in me. My assignment is to encourage people to ask God for twice as much of the anointing of God that their leader or their teacher has. We have a tendency, I find, to long to be like people and we look at people and compare success to what they have. We, we, we want to be like people when we see that they have nice homes. They have nice cars. They drive on these fat cars of today. And, and, and they have a lot of money. They have clothes and they have positions. This is what we sort of kind of character, what we want to be like. People who have all of that. Be they in church or out of church, we still look at that and say, that's what I want. But we very seldom look at them and see the God that's in them and say, that's what I want. Even if they don't have all of the other finaries, Pastor Holmes, but they have the power of God in their life. We don't say, sister girl, we don't say to the Lord, that's the part that I want. If you give me the homes, if you give me the cars, if you give me the money, I'll, I'll be appreciative. But if you don't, God, I want the spirit of yes. your spirit that's in them. I want it to be double in me. I want to be used by you the way I see you using my leader. You understand? I want to be used by you the way I see you using these other preachers, but not because of the financial aspect of it or the materialistic aspect of it, but because I want that close walk with you, that close talk with you. You understand? I want to commune with you. I want that hunger of the more of you in my life. Our scripture text takes us to the prophet Elijah, which was a great man of God. He was used greatly by God. I found out that he walked closely with the Lord and communicated with him on a daily basis, which taught me that if you want that connection with God that your leader has, you got to do what your leader does. Amen. In other words, if your leader meets God at a certain time every day faithfully, then you have to set up a time with God. You don't have to meet the same time they do, but you have to set up a set time to meet God faithfully and allow nothing and nobody to intervene or interfere with the time that you meet the Lord. In other words, you give God the opinion, I can count on you to be where you say you're going to be to meet me at that time. You understand? And, and so, if you're going to ask God for what they have, you've got to be willing to do what they're doing. Elijah met God and talked with God and communed with God. He pulled away from people so he could not be disturbed. You understand? And, 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 and he began to have power with God to the point that whatever he said, God honored. One of the things, uh, Pastor Holmes, that I used to ask God when I was a teenager, which wasn't yesterday, as y'all can tell, which wasn't yesterday, but I used to say to God, how come the prophets of old could speak and say things and you honored it? How come when you told them to say something, they did it, but then when they said something, you did it just because they said it? Right, right. Because when we read the Bible, we assume that every time the prophet spoke, it was because God said for them to speak. But you will find in, uh, concerning Elijah and Elisha, you will find that when they said something, God honored Without God telling them to say they said it. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, and so, and, and, and I kept saying, God, how come that, that power, that connection, that, that when we say things of today, it doesn't seem to go just like that. He said, because they walked with me daily and talked with me daily until they got to know my voice daily and I got to know their spirit daily. To the point that I knew I could count on them that if I tell them to say something to somebody, no matter what position they were in, in other words, if I tell them to say something to the king, they weren't scared of the king more than they were afraid of what I would do. Because the Bible says that Elijah went to Ahab, and Ahab was the king of Israel, who married Jezebel, which was an idolater. You understand? 
and, and Ahab was more afraid of Jezebel yes. than he was of Elijah when he knew that Elijah was a prophet of God. Yes. Right? Yes. You understand? And Elijah was not afraid of Ahab nor Jezebel. Yes. He said what he had to say. Yes. You understand? Yes. And the Bible says here that in that, in that uh, 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 17th chapter, the Bible said that Elijah said that there will be no rain nor do upon the earth until I come back and say so. And guess what? God honors Elijah's word. Read it. You will not find where he said, Hallelujah, thus saith the Lord. He just spoke and said, There will be no do nor rain upon the earth until I come back and say so. All right. My Lord. And God honored it. He shut up the heavens. He shut up underneath the earth. No dew came from under the earth. No rain came down from heaven. Not just for that moment, but for three long years until there was a drought in the land. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then God speaks to Elijah. After Elijah declared and after God honored his declaration, he speaks to Elijah and says, get to the brook of Cherith yes. yes. and stay there. Yes. And I will call the ravens to feed you. And Elijah did what God spoke to him to do. He went to the brook of Cherith and there he stayed. And while he was there, God sent the ravens, which is considered a dirty bird. Yes, which lets you know sometimes God can take dirty people to bless you. They may be dirty carriers, but what they're carrying, God is handling it. Oh, God, you You hear people say, oh, I don't want their money because I know how they get it. And God puts you in their spirit and they say, for some reason, I come to be a blessing. Don't turn. Because God sent them to give it to you. With no strings attached. Don't, right. don't you make it known. No strings attached. I'm happy to accept your blessing. Right. And so while at the brook of Cherith, the ravens came and fed him breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh -huh. But when God was ready to dry up the brook, he told him to get up and go to Zarephath. Right. And he got up and went to Zarephath where he was a blessing. Yes, even though he thought the woman was going to be a blessing to him, he ended up being a blessing to the widow of Zarephath and her son. He obeyed God. So God would honor what he would do or what he would say just because he knew he could rely on him to be obedient to his word. And so here, God has instructed him in the 19th chapter because of the fact that he had gone, let me back up a minute, he had gone to Ahab at the end of the three years, and he told Ahab to gather Israel at Mount Carmel, because I want to talk to them. And he comes to Israel, and he says, how long will you halt between two opinions? Yes. How long are you going to serve the, the, the God that Jezebel is putting up for you, and not serve the Almighty God? If they'll be God, serve him, but if God be God, serve him. And then he challenges the prophets of Baal to a showdown at the top of Mount Carmel okay. and told them to build two altars and put a, a sacrifice on each altar, yes. giving Baal's prophets, which was 400, I believe, 430 prophets, giving them permission to call on their God. Yes. Because he had confidence in the God that he served. Yes. And they begin to call on Baal, and Baal never answered. To the point where he teased them and said, maybe he went on vacation. Maybe he fell asleep. You need to call him a little bit louder. And they begin to scream and holler for Baal to the point where they were cutting themselves. Because in biblical times, those that worship idol gods and witchcraft believe that if you shed your blood over the sacrifice, that they were caught and would get that God to come. But Showed up to the point that Elijah said, Enough is enough, move your stuff out of the way, and put his sacrifice.
sacrifice up there. And he challenged them and said, drench it seven times. Yes. Pour water on it because he knew in natural mind, water and fire don't mix. Yes. And something that's drenched with water can't catch on fire. Yes. But he knew who he served. Yes. And he knew that if he called on God for fire to come and drench the sacrifice, God will honor what he said because of the connection that he out there on the earth. Jezebel sought after Elijah's life. 
and promised us, threatened him, yes. and said, as I live, yeah. I'll do twice as much to you. Because he had them to take the prophets of Baal and cut them up asunder, right. killing them. Yes. And she said, I'll do twice to you what you did. Yes. And so he ran away from the territory and hid in a cave. Yes. And God called him. Yes. And when he came out of the cave, uh -huh. God began to tell, ask him, what are you doing here? That means we can't keep running from the people. You better Ooh. tell somebody. We got to be bold enough to stand. Yes. The Lord is on my side. Jericho with him, 
the sons of the prophets, the students uh -huh. from underneath the teachers in Jericho yeah. comes up to Elijah, Elisha and says to him, don't you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you? You need to stay here with us and find you another teacher. Elisha looks at them and says, I know it. Shut up. Mind your business. That's what he's saying in so many words. In the typical language, it was just, yeah, hold your peace. But in everyday languages, mind your business. This is my line for one day. I'm not going to listen to what you got to say. So when Elijah saw that he wasn't going to leave him, he went to Jericho with him. Then he left Jericho. He said to him, God is sending me now from Jericho to Jordan. So you stay here in Jericho. No, I'm not going to leave you. Because Bethel's students of the prophets tried to talk him to stay. Jericho students of the prophet tried to talk him to stay. He said, I'm not, I don't care how much you keep talking to me to say, I'm not leaving you. So when he realized he couldn't persuade him, he took him with him to Jordan. Jordan was a river that he had to cross over right before he was taken away. If you ever used to hear the old folks sing, Jordan River, I'm bound to cross. I I got to go to Jordan. He went to Jordan. Yeah. And the Bible says 50 sons of the prophets viewed from a distance. In other words, they followed them from a distance. Wouldn't allow them to be seen by Elijah and Elisha. In other words, 50 nosy people. Because yeah, yeah. they wanted to see what was going to happen when Elijah gets taken up. What was Elisha or Elisha going to do? How was he going to get back across the water once he went over with Elijah? They were being nosy. I come to tell, I come to tell you and me that when God got his hand on you and have you working close to leadership, you're going to find Folk, wondering what you do, how you get that place. How come you so close? How come the pastor takes you everywhere? How come the pastor gives you so much to do? And jealousy would get into their spirit, asking a bunch of questions, and then sitting and wondering, waiting for you to fall, because so they want to know how the pastor gonna handle that. But you gotta stay like. Mind your own business. Yeah. I'll be I hey. All about what God has for me. Yeah. If you do what I do, yeah. maybe you can get what I'm about to get. They were watching, sister girl, to see what was going to happen. All right. So when Elijah and Elisha got to the edge of the Jordan, yes. the Bible said, that Elijah took his mantle yes. off, uh -huh. wrapped it around his hand, yes. and smoked on Jordan, edge of the Jordan water. Yes. And God honored the smoke yes. and separated the water, yes. causing them to back up like he did with Moses. Yes. Yes. And guess what? Uh -huh. As quick as they backed up, dry ground appeared, yes. just like he did with Moses. Yes. Until the two of them went over on dry ground. And when they got to the other side, I mean, it doesn't say he hit the waters again like Moses did. But the waters came back. It was just enough to make a pathway through to the other side of safety. I come to tell you when the enemy puts a block in your way, trying to prevent you from getting what God has for you.
you want from me. Ask me what you want me to do before I be taken away from you and I'll give it to you. He had no idea that this was Elisha's request for a double portion. Because when Elisha said, all I want is a double portion of your spirit to be upon me. He looked at Elisha and said, you have asked for a hard thing. The reason he said that is because the cost of his anointing. Until he was no longer 
country folk yeah. waiting on the other side yeah. thinking, what's he going to do now? Yeah. Elijah is gone. Yeah. How he going to get back across now? Yeah. There is no more Elijah. But what they didn't know was that he paid the price to get the anointing that Elijah had twice. He went back to the water. Elijah he said, Where is the God of Elijah? And he smoked the water. And the God of Elijah has now become the God of Elisha. And he separated the waters just at his tapping. And he went over on dry ground back across the Jordan to the 50 nosy people. Yeah. 
speak to him. Help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But if you do what they did, he's going to give you what they got. He's going to give you what she had. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's looking for a few good people that is willing to do what your pastor does. If your pastor stays in prayer, if first lady stays in prayer, Hallelujah. To West Philadelphia Community Baptist Church. If your leaders stay in prayer. If they fast and pray. Hallelujah. They had to have built up a connection with God. For God to come through and bring him from death's door. And restore him. To Jesus. And get ready to give him an awesome healing ministry. Because you can't get healed like that. And not go heal somebody.
and work a miracle. And I wasn't even there, but I showed you what God is saying. And she laid hands on you, you can best believe you will want to be healed. You will want to get delivered. Because she walked circumspectly for God, just like Elijah. Did. And that's what God is calling for in this place. For us to stop half-stepping past that. For us to stop compromising. People are compromising just to have members in the church. God don't need your help to compromise. Just preach the unadulterated gospel. And the rest is in your hands. Because if we want people to come to church, I ask them this question and I'm going to sit down. I ask them this question. When Jesus went around the city right. and he ministered to the sinners, That's right. when he got up, That's right. the sinners followed him. Uh -huh. He didn't follow the sinners. Right. And what I mean by that, he didn't take on their ways, they took on his ways. So why is it that the church world got to take on the way of the, church of the world? I know Paul said I became all things to all men that I might win some. I know he said that. But that meant he just scooped down to where they were. So if, if they look like a bum, he dressed like a bum because they would have felt like, well, you can't come tell me nothing. So he dressed up, but he can take on sin.
Hallelujah. I used to say, even me the Lord. Yes, even me. Even me. Bless the Lord, hallelujah. 